Good evening, folks, and welcome to Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Al Huey, along with my partner, Robert Ironman, and we're glad to have you with us tonight. And we're also glad to have as our special guest tonight, City Manager Dennis Spear. Thank you, Dennis, for joining us tonight. And we should explain that, that uh, Dennis isn't trying to be a rock star yeah, that's with, true. With, with his sunglasses. Uh, he has a medical condition that requires him to keep light out, and especially in a studio, it's really bad. So um, that's the purpose of the sunglasses. So please understand. Okay. Uh, while we have Mr. Spear with us tonight, uh, I should say we've been trying to get a hold of Mr. Spear for quite some time. And again, we're thankful to, that he's able to join us tonight. Uh, we'd like to talk a little bit about what's going on and has been going on for this year and a little bit of last year is we've had a little bit of road work in town. <laughs> <laughs> so come, much so that, it, that sometimes um, the evil side of me is a little annoyed by it. Yeah. And then I think about how it was before and how it was before and I, yeah. I, I, that passes. But so. Uh, how did we get, Measure L isn't funding a lot of these streets because wasn't Measure L mainly for maintenance of streets? That's correct. So how did we all of a sudden get all this money to be able to do all the streets that we're doing here? Uh, the majority of the money that uh, we're using right now for streets is our tax allocation bonds or TAP funding. Uh, then you have to understand that uh, streets in general are uh, funded in different ways. Uh, the, in terms of the, there are program projects where we are, are able to receive, our, we were able to leverage our money against either federal or state money. And these are projects that are programmed through current council of governments uh, uh, as far as the, R, uh, the RTIP, the Regional Transportation Improvement Program. And then from there, uh, it would go uh, to be funded by the State Transportation Improvement Program and if necessary and if eligible, it can be funded under the um, Federal Transportation Improvement Program. And those are what I call our program projects. Uh, I will later go through the list of the projects that we have done in the last year. And West Ridge Crest Boulevard was a federally funded project. For, for instance, some of our projects uh, such as on um, South China Lake Boulevard, those would be STIP programs funded through the State Transportation Improvement I, Program. I thought Ridgecrest Boulevard was part of the Kern Cog it allocation was, it, also. It starts, there's a process, you, the, it follows, the, you have to fund it regionally first, mm -hmm. and that's the RTIP. Then from the RTIP, when that's approved, it's passed on to the state, and then it's funded as an STIP, State Transportation Improvement uh, Project Funding. If, if it's eligible, uh, and uh, West Ridgecrest Boulevard was found to be eligible, under their uh, regionally significant cat category, mm -hmm. it's funded by the feds. So that ultimately was funded by the um, uh, feds as a regionally significant uh, okay. project. Okay. And uh -huh. then in addition to program projects, you have the the uh, the tab uh, uh, or the tax allocation bond projects, and that's the majority, other than West Ridgecrest Boulevard, that you're seeing. A, a lot of the projects that are being done are being done. Uh, with this uh, TAB funding, and the uh, the idea of the TAB uh, funding, I'd, I'd have to back up and maybe should have started there, but we have you were required by state and federal law to follow a pavement management system, and that study's done every three uh, anywhere from three to five years, and when the last pavement uh, PMS study was done, there was an indication of um, the conditions of all our various road segments in town. And with this listing, for our normal maintenance money, we're supposed to follow uh, the PMS directly. Well, at the time when uh, the infrastructure committee met and the uh, pavement management system study was presented to them, uh, there was a, uh, an anticipation of spending tab allocation bonds uh, for road projects. So, so one, of the one of the council members who was also an infrastructure committee member asked the consultant, well, this is your PMS list, but based on your study, if the city were to have $15 million of uh, tax allocation bonds money and were able to spend it, could you come up with a list on how you would spend it 
based on your study, but not use it Shovel ready PMS projects, process. essentially. Right. Well, could be. And so they, uh, so they said yes. And so they developed, the consultant, Will Dan, uh, developed a five-year list of projects to s expend $15 million. And they said that uh, when you've spent the money for these uh, uh, projects, which would be the resurfacing or complete reconstruction projects, then we would recommend that you spend one and a half million dollars a year to maintain these and the other roads you have in town. Two things happened there. One was a list of projects uh, for the tax, al uh, tax allocation bonds to fund. And two was the first time the idea was passed on that maintenance, uh, if we made these expenditures, we should be prepared uh, to expend one and a half million dollars a year. And this is where that number of one and a half million dollars minimum a year came from for the Measure L. And, and so uh, with that in mind, we have, now I've mentioned the program projects. We also have the TAB projects. And then finally, we have our street maintenance project projects, which can be anything from pot hill, a pot hole repair to crack filling to what we call a microsurfacing or micropaving, which is really a type of slurry seal. And that's left, uh, I'll say at the discretion in terms of grouping, but that's where we strictly adhere to uh, pay, uh, PMS or the pavement management system. But the discretion is between myself as public works director, our city engineer, and our street superintendent. We take a look at the uh, listing of the priority projects uh, from a PMS standpoint, but we try to logistically group them. Because if we're going to have a contractor uh, do slurry seals, seals, we'll try and keep them in one area rather than uh, on a particular project run from the northeast part of town to the southeast part of town and that sort of thing. But other than that, street maintenance uh, pretty much follows our PMS system. And one thing I uh, wanted to comment on in terms of uh, PMS is PMS is not what you would expect and not what you're seeing as far as our TAB uh, projects. Uh, PMS is based on uh, the uh, PCI. We've got about which, 15 seconds, so go ahead. Which is based on PCI, the uh, Pavement Condition I uh, Index. And what it does is it allows us to, to, to categorize the streets in terms of a matrix. Matrix is based on two things, uh, average daily traffic. Keep that thought on those two things. <laughs> yes. We've got to take a break. On the other side of the break, we'll continue talking about streets with our guest, Mr. Dennis Spear, City Manager. Join us. Welcome back to our second segment of Ridgecrest Talk here on KZGN TV. I'm Robert Ironman, along with my partner Al Huey. And tonight's guest is Mr. Dennis Spear, City Manager of the City of Ridgecrest. And we're talking streets. And we had to cut you off there. Um, if you can remember, you can just continue you with... You on two points you were trying to make. Right, right. continuing with our um, street maintenance following our uh, pavement management system. There, there, uh, we categorize the streets as far as uh, how they will be, um, uh, which streets we will actually uh, maintain at a particular point in time based on the average daily traffic and the PCI condition. And so the streets that uh, PCI uh, pay, uh, that's the pavement condition index. Uh, index. Okay. Yes. And and so what we try and do, and this is different than the tab streets or the program projects. The, what, what, that, uh, what we try and do is the, the key is that uh, is preventive maintenance. In other words, it might sound illogical, but we, the street maintenance in our PMS uh, system is not based on which streets are in the worst condition and that we're going to go out there and attack those. We spend our money first on, uh, have, a, have a chart, but we spend our, mo spend our money first on the uh, streets that are, um, uh, uh, we spend our money first on the streets that are in the best shape. And the idea is, is uh, we use a chart, this, this assessment chart, and the streets that um, are in the uh, one, two, three, four, five, you start, you start spending your money on the streets uh, with the lowest number, they're in the best shape, 
And he used various uh, types of treatments. He used a black seal, he used a fog seal, used a uh, slurry seal. Why wouldn't seal. you go after the streets so, that were in worse condition? Be, because the idea is, is you want to preserve. And I, they have a chart here too. As long as you're, as long as you're keeping your streets in good condition, even in the fair condition, you're you're as far as the cost is much much uh, cheaper. Oh so, yeah. So your payment management system dictates that you spend your. Um, uh, you spend your money on your best streets to preserve them. Now, as you go through your chart and as you uh, have money, you can go beyond the one, twos, threes, fours, and maybe you can get down to the streets that are in um, a fair condition and maybe you can get poor. But once you get in the poor condition, uh, you're, you're probably going to exhaust your supply of any kind of, um, of maintenance dollars, and that's where tab dollars uh, comes in to either resurface or reconstruct streets or program projects such as you may, re whether you, uh, whether you uh, agree with the final results on West Ridge Crest Boulevard or whether you don't, there, uh, if you recall what the street looked like before and what it looks like now, that was never a candidate. I don't only recall what it looked like, I recall huh? what it felt like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And, and so the idea was that street was beyond street maintenance money. It was. It either uh, would require a, a, a funding through a through a tax allocation bond measure, or it would require require outside funding. Well, how uh, is it? I've seen some of the streets here recently. I believe they were repaved. Uh, example is uh, Drummond, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a sign there paid for by Measure L and Tab funds. And I thought you said Measure L was just for maintenance. We well, we have a blend. Well, now we use Measure L. A Measure L fund is to complement our state gas tax funds. Because I ought to back up. Street maintenance is comprised of um, at least, at the very least, three types of funds. First of all, the gas tax funds goes directly into street maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, we have uh, TDA, uh, Article um, uh, Eight funds that uh, also are allowed to go into. Um, uh, the uh, street uh, street uh, maintenance fund, and then recently with the passage of Measure L, Measure L funds can also be a part of that. And what the TDA, it's the Transportation Development Act, and what that is is that's a special funding that goes uh, for state transportation projects. Uh, it goes first to, to transit. Uh, we have an unmet need, uh, transit needs hearing every year, and after all the um, transit needs are met and funded, any remaining funds that come to us based on, it's basically a population formula, mm -hmm. uh, can be used for streets. So that money uh, historically uh, adds to the gas tax money in the street maintenance account. And like I said, now that there's a Measure L money, Measure L money can go into streets. But Measure L money uh, is, is, to, use, is uh, to be used to maintain our streets. And we, uh, we also have used Measure L money for leverage money uh, for uh, projects that are programmed uh, for uh, or through uh, current council of governments and when it's uh, time our program year is is up is we that have like a, you're talking about like matching it's, it's match money okay. exactly and we have used measure l uh, for match money and then we've used measure l money to blend money if on a particular project like you're referring to we have used uh, tab and measure l money uh, to do some of our uh, microsurfacing projects, which is uh, really a, uh, a hot mix, thin layer of uh, okay. asphalt. Okay, let's get to the list of the streets. If, if you have the list from last year and what's going on right now. I do, I do. No, in terms of the streets that were finished, uh, our uh, recently completed 2014 uh, year, we have the West Ridge Crest Boulevard project. It was a program project. It was complete reconstruction. That project was from uh, Mahan to China Lake Boulevard. It was uh, funded, as I mentioned earlier, as originally significant project. It was federally funded. Then we had the South Sunland pro uh, Street, which was the, s the section from Upjohn to Bowman. That was a uh, new road. It was CMAC, or Congestion uh, Mitigation Air Quality Program money. Uh, then we had Sunland to the north of that, which was from uh, State Route 178 to Upjohn. That was a reconstruction. Uh, that was a project that was interesting because it was actually funded with TAB funding, but it was actually um, programmed at one point in time, but we ran out of program dollars through uh, uh, KernCog. 
uh, under uh, RTP, uh, RTIP, Regional Transportation Improvement Program, but we had the pro what we had the project designed, and since we had it designed, and since it was on the list, we went ahead and um, uh, presented to council a an opportunity. Okay, we've got about to, thirty seconds, to so fund we can just get the list out real quick. Tab. Uh, then we have the South China Lake Boulevard project, which was up John to Bowman. That's an overlay project that was regional surface transportation money, and Measure L money uh, acted as the match money on that. Then we have the Gateway Boulevard project from Bowman to Upjohn. That was an overlay <coughs> uh, project using TAP money. We had the uh, North Mayhem project, Ward to Graf. <coughs> Excuse me. That was also an overlay project, also a TAP, TAP funding. Then Ten seconds. I won't be able to complete it, but North Mayhem Street, Ward Avenue, <coughs> Ward Avenue to Grab Bus Avenue, uh, Graf Avenue. That was overlay. We'll and there to, was we'll tab funding. We'll have to come, come back to the list where you left off. Please come back and join us for segment three. Thanks. And welcome back to segment three. Uh, this evening's discussion on Ridgecrest Talk uh, with City Manager Dennis Spear. And I forgot to mention, um, there'll be a test at the end of this on the first two segments. And if you don't pass it, sorry, we're going to have to cut you off from watching anymore, really. Um, my, the point I was going to make is, is that my head is practically exploding with all this information. Right. Um, um, but. Um, I think that an important aspect of it is that we all learn why it is that what we've said for years is the case. Why are they doing this street? It's the one street that's good. Yeah. Well, it's done, there really is a purpose. We may not appreciate the purpose or understand the purpose, but um, minds brighter than ours have figured this out and, and have determined that that is the wisest use of the money to be expended. Um, and then the other thing is why uh, it had to be mostly because of Measure L is all I can think because we, were, we weren't having many streets uh, work, many streets having work done on them prior to last year. Well, and certainly he did explain that yeah. many times that provides the matching funds and if you have the matching funds the project can go on and if you didn't, well, your SOL. So, so yeah, it, Measure L d has helped dramatically. Okay, you left off on your list from last year, and that was? Right, completing the uh, 2014 finished projects, we have the uh, City Hall uh, alleyway, that's from the uh, south uh, property line of Bank of America to California there, behind okay. the car wash. We, yeah. have, we had several Safe Routes to School projects. They were 100% federally funded. We had the projects at Los Flores Elementary, uh, the Gateway Elementary, Monroe Middle School, and we had traffic uh, signal construction at Upjohn and China Lake Boulevard. We have the um, uh, Highway uh, Safety Improvement Program projects, and the, we had seven uh, microsurfacing projects that started in October 27th through uh, November uh, 14th, just of last year. We had the Downstreet project from Ridgecrest to Las Flores, the Downstreet between Las Flores to Drummond, the Las Flores Avenue, from Downs Avenue to Norman Avenue, the Upjohn Avenue from Mayhan to Down Street, Upjohn Avenue, Mayhan to Guam, Downs Avenue between Bowman and Upjohn Avenue, and Dolphin Avenue uh, between um, Mayhan and Downs. And I want to point out when we say microsurfacing, there are two types we use depending on the condition and the uh, average daily tra uh, traffic of the street. We use both a, uh, uh, a micro paving. Uh, which is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a thin, um, a hat, a hot asphalt mix, uh, lift, if you will. And we also use a cape seal. And the cape seal is when the street needs um, a little bit, uh, uh, when we need to add a little bit more structural integrity to the street uh, because of the um, amount of traffic. And in terms of the, uh, and, and to give you an example of the two, uh, several years ago now, the um, South China Lake Boulevard, just south of uh, uh, West Ridgecrest uh, Boulevard. Uh, we, that was a uh, micro paving job that was done in front of the Bank of America and all the way down to Upjohn. And then if you were driving south on 
at South China Lake Boulevard and turned right on the Upjohn at that point. That was a Cape Seal that was done on Upjohn between um, South China Lake Boulevard and uh, Downs. And uh, just, just for distinction, because there is a, uh, uh, there is a, there was a need on uh, Upjohn to actually uh, make that even a stronger section with the uh, Cape Seal. Now continuing in terms of uh, this last spring, uh, the uh, streets that were done uh, that in terms of microsurfacing were, were, were Norma between Drummond and Inyo Kern Road, eastbound Ward Avenue, Mayhan to Down Street, Los Flores from Mayhan Street to Down Street, Mayhan from Ridgecrest Boulevard to Ward Avenue. We also had, uh, are in the process, these are actually being completed now. Uh, seven traffic signal upgrades have just been completed. That was, uh, we utilized Highway Safety Improvement Program or HSIP funding, and we used Measure L funding for a match. We also had 12 intersections where we uh, improved the signage and the street markings. That's been completed. That also utilized uh, HSIP or Highway Safety Improvement Fund funds, and the, uh, that also had a Measure L funding match. Uh, the roads that will be pay paved this fall uh, bids are out right now, and they're going to close August 20th, and we will be taking them to council in the first meeting in September. Uh, but the, those roads for this fall will be the Bowman Road from Down Street to Primrose Street, Richmond Road from the end of Gateway Bike Path to East Ridgecrest Boulevard, Radar Avenue from Nevada Street to Down Street. All right. And then the roads that will be uh, scheduled for paving in the spring of uh, 2016 are South China Lake Boulevard, Bowman Road to College Heights Boulevard. That's an overlay. We'll be using RSTP uh, funds. Uh, traffic signalization, or rather syn synchronization, between Ridgecrest Boulevard and College Heights Boulevard. And that also is HSIP with Measure L match map funding. And then traffic signal at Bowman and China Lake Boulevard. That'll be going out to bid uh, soon. Uh, design work has been completed. That also used HSIP uh, for the funding source with Measure L as the matching money. And then uh, Drummond Avenue widening between Inyo Kern Road and Down Street. And North Warmer, Warner Drummond Avenue to West Hall Avenue. That's using uh, the CMAC funding or Congestion Management Air Quality Program. And it's between, um, and then uh, also uh, South Grass Street, South um, Sierra to uh, Norma Avenue. Uh, that's using uh, CMAC uh, money as well. And then we're going to be doing uh, ADA uh, handicap replacement uh, with uh, community development block grant funds. The grouping of projects still has yet to be determined. And then also in the spring, Down Street construction uh, of John and West Ridgecrest. The design's 100% complete, but we don't have uh, funding for that project, though we have applied uh, for uh, through various program sources at this time. And the uh, plans have all been, have been distributed to all the utility companies. Then there are also projects that we- We got 30 seconds. We only have 30 seconds. So I think the upshot here is that we really need to have you come back and be with us another time. Because yeah, because we wanted to talk to you more a little bit about Measure L. And we wanted to talk to you about the slight oversight of $600,000 shortage, but we just didn't have time. But it would be nice to have you back because I'm sure that the audience appreciated all the information oh, that sure. you've been able to, to, to give them. Um, so uh, explained a lot in my mind. So can we get you to come back? You can get me to come back. All right. All right. All right, folks, join us next week when we'll be here again talking who knows what. Water, streets, you never know. Wine, women, and song. Yeah. All right, join us next week right here on Ridgecrest Talk, your local TV, KZGN.